Vice-Chancellor. Senate has resolved to confer the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa upon Anne-Marie Imapadon. Dr. Anne-Marie Imaphidon stands as a beacon of inspiration and a paragon of excellence in the fields of science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM. Her journey is a testament to the power of determination, intellect and an unwavering commitment to fostering diversity and inclusion in STEM. Born in Walthamstow, East London, Anne-Marie's prodigious talent was evident from a young age. Remarkably, she became the youngest girl to pass A-level computing at just 11 years old and went on to earn her master's degree in mathematics and computer science from the University of Oxford by the age of 20. Her early career saw her holding significant technical roles at renowned firms such as Deutsche Bank, where she amassed a wealth of experience that would later underpin her entrepreneurial ventures. In 2013, driven by a profound experience at the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing, Anne-Marie co-founded STEMETS, a social enterprise dedicated to inspiring and supporting the next generation of girls, young women, and non-binary young people to pursue careers in STEM. Under her visionary leadership, STEMETS has reached over 60,000 young people across Europe providing free resources, workshops, hackathons, and mentorship programs. STEMETS is more than an organization. It's a movement that challenges the status quo and champions a future where diversity in STEM is not just an aspiration, but a reality. Dr. Imaphidon's contributions extend beyond STEMETS. She's been a prominent voice in advocating for gender diversity in technology regularly appearing in the media and delivering keynote addresses at major conferences. Her influence is further cemented by her role as the 2022-23 President of the British Science Association, her service on the Council of Research England, and as the maths genius that you may have seen on the TV programme, Countdown. In addition to her organisational, in addition to her organisational and advocacy work, Anne-Marie is also an accomplished author. Her book, She's in Control, explores the underrepresentation of women in tech, providing both an analysis of the problem and a roadmap for change. She's in Control is a powerful call to action, encouraging women to take control of technology and use it as a tool for empowerment. Anne-Marie's achievements have not gone unnoticed. In 2017, Anne-Marie was awarded an MBE for her services to young women and the STEM sector. She was also named the most influential woman in tech in the UK by Computer Weekly in 2020, further solidifying her status as a leading figure in the tech community. Anne-Marie is a long-standing and highly respected member of our Department of Computer Science Industry Advisory Board, and as such, we have named our Women in Tech Scholarships the Anne-Marie Maffedon or AMI scholarships for undergraduate women in her honor. Dr. Maffedon's vision for the future is one of inclusivity and balance in STEM. She hopes that one day organizations like STEMETS will no longer be necessary because the landscape will have fundamentally changed to the naturally inclusive and supportive talents of all. Vice Chancellor, in recognition of her extraordinary contributions to science and technology, her unwavering commitment to diversity, and her relentless pursuit of excellence, I present to you Dr. Anne-Marie Imaphidon, who is eminently worthy of the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Anne-Marie Imaphidon, by the authority of Durham University, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Congratulations.
Vice-Chancellor, Pro-Vice-Chancellor, esteemed members of the university, distinguished guests, graduates. It's my pleasure to join you in celebration today, even more so, as you've just heard, as I'm no stranger to Durham University. I've spent hours in meetings and on the trains up and down, playing a small part alongside Professor Sue Black in ensuring that the innovators of tomorrow are as diverse as the world of tomorrow and have the right grounding to solve more problems than they create. In addition to the scholarship named after me and being on the uh, industry uh, external advisory board here at the Computer Science Department, I've also had the pleasure of bringing lots of our STEMETs to the university, uh, to the campus, uh, to meet local businesses and also participate in hackathons. Um, and there was also that one time that I was actually on the opposing team to Durham University um, in the 2017 uh, Christmas uh, University Challenge. Now, rarely seen and often forgotten, foundations are crucial long after they've been laid. Proportionally, the time it takes to lay a foundation is tiny compared to the time spent uh, sitting on it, building on it, and creating on it. And for all of you graduates today, I'm very excited for all the foundations that we are celebrating in your new qualification. I've thought a little bit more about foundations actually in the last couple of days in preparing for this today as it's the motto that you have here at the university, Psalms 86, her foundations are set upon the holy hills. And so as you consider and you build on this foundation going on from today, in the short time I had, I wanted to share a piece of advice from my own building project and my own foundations in my career, which is very much still under construction. And I'd say that actually this advice applies to anything that you do next, whether across industry, academia, entrepreneurship, or in public service. And it's actually comes, it's inspired actually from the collegiate system that you've been a part of here, which I believe is a winning principle for life. So my advice is this thing of life, don't do it alone. College has served as a community. Your clubs and societies have also served as communities around you, in addition to obviously the fun bits of being in them. There are skills that you've been able to develop as a result, people that you've been able to commiserate with as well as celebrate with, and you've been able to invest in others as they've also invested in you, and you've collectively reaped the, the rewards of doing so. In life, continue to gather folks around you and be sure to gather different types of people to enhance your proper understanding of a changing world, the impact you're able to have, and also to ensure that you don't develop major blind spots on what the collective human experience actually is. The best innovations come from cross-disciplinary groups. And I'm reminded, actually, of the research that they've done on Nobel Prize winners, um, especially in the sciences, actually, that you're much more likely to win a Nobel Prize in the sciences if you've engaged with the arts as part of your upbringing. I'll say that one more time. As much as I love my computer science, you're much more likely to be a Nobel Prize winning scientist if you've had some form of arts training as part of your upbringing. Now, going on from today, it won't be as easy to build community as it has been in college, but it certainly will be worth it. I see this day to day in the running of my organization, STEMETS, as well as in the research and reports from the Institute of the Future of Work that I co-chair uh, alongside uh, Professor Sue Black as a trustee too. Technical skills and subject knowledge, of course, are important. Also, core skills like collaboration, creativity, and connection are going to remain in demand even as the fourth industrial revolution of work rolls on. And skills like this are learnt in the doing with community, not solely in a lecture theatre. They say, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go further, go together. Remember, life is a marathon, not a sprint. Congratulations again to today's graduates, the Durham staff, and the support systems that we have here in the room. In fact, in the cathedral, this is more than a room. Here's to strong foundations. Thank you very much. <laughs>